Carter was stuck in bondage to pornography and sexual addictions that were taking control of his life and relationship. This is his story of freedom from those literal demons. So you one of these people that thinks they had demons cast out of them? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it was a life-changing experience, or was it? what was it for you? I mean, I would say it's a pretty life-changing experience. Okay. Like, yeah. Big difference, for sure. I want to welcome Carter to the, the channel. Carter, it's good to have you on. I appreciate you being here, my friend. No problem. Uh, so how long has it been? About four or five weeks since we did a deliverance together, you and I and a couple guys? Yeah, I think like the first or second week of November. Okay. So it's been a few weeks now. And Carter is a junior in college right now, but um, what were you struggling with right before we went through the deliverance? What was the reason why you were coming to counseling and then you yeah. went through deliverance? Um, I'd say for me, it was just a big struggle with I mean, a bunch of just addictions, like yeah. pornography, um, lustfulness, looking at other women. Um, it got to the point extreme, like where I was like coding my computer to get around mm -hmm. things and like... Um, to try to hide it from someone? Or? Yeah, or even like gain access to certain things mm -hmm. when I try to really like yeah. set blockers and stuff. And then um, just like a lot of emotion of like not feeling enough. Mm -hmm. And um, part of it too was like, I really didn't think I knew Christ for mm -hmm. a long time and um I think that was something I like struggled with at first was like having everybody know that for 21 years like they knew I grew up in a Christian family like mm -hmm. they knew I believed in Jesus when I really didn't like because mm -hmm. I noticed like you know why is it I'm getting my word every day why am I pouring so much in but I'm not feeling like freedom and feeling okay. like I'm a follower of Christ and I think really it was I really didn't know Jesus and you know sometimes that's a realization people need to have like yeah. if you grow up in church like you know doesn't mean like you know the enemy is not going to come at you and your family and who yeah. you are like yeah. and uh sometimes it takes 21 years or 40 years for you to know Christ yeah that's okay so. so you got to the point just a bunch of months ago right where you just surrendered completely to Jesus Mm -hmm. And then at that point, he led you to come in for some counseling. Yeah. And then, mm -hmm. and then I encouraged you to go through some deliverance, and I met with you, and we cast some demons out, didn't we? Yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. So one big thing that I remember, that, and I know you're comfortable with me sharing, is yeah. that you were engaged, and your fiancé was really having trouble trusting because you had cheated mm -hmm. on her with the, with the pornography. Yes. And I really honor and respect you because you view that as cheating, yeah, a lot mm -hmm. of people would not view it as cheating, but that really honors your fiance, and that's going to really help you have a successful yeah. marriage moving forward. Uh -huh. That you that you take it that seriously. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. What else were you struggling with in the relationship because of the pornography and the sexual addiction that you didn't want? I think, like in regards to like Emily, like our relationship, uh, one of the biggest things was just like I think one like communication was a real hit because there would be days where. You know, she would call me on the phone in the morning on the way to work, and I would just be like, hey, like, in my brain, I'm like, I want to get off, get on my computer, because, like, I'm in this addiction. And, You're like, just preoccupied. By yeah, that. and um, I noticed I was really angry towards her, mm -hmm. like, a lot of, not, like, physically, but verbally, or just saying things just that irritable were not in my character. Yeah. Or even, like, you know, if I left to go to bed, like, I was always, like, so exhausted. Mm -hmm. And I think that's one of the craziest things that opened to my eyes after I did get that freedom and got saved was like now I'm like you know I get tired like mm -hmm. any other human but like there's no like oh I'm exhausted because like mm -hmm. sin can make you exhausted surprisingly yeah. like yeah you know, trying that, to hide it trying to cover it up trying to I want to quote you on that one that's like, yeah, yeah that's good I like exhaust that you. Yeah. yeah so a lot of people watching don't know anything about spiritual deliverance mm -hmm. um and exorcism yeah and we're trying to normalize it and i know yeah. that, i know that's why you're here <laughs> yeah so what would you say to people about what the experience was like i would say uh first and like foremost i was a skeptic at first mm -hmm. um my best friends came to this church and um actually had a deliverance session set up with y'all like y a year about a year ago like last oh you did okay. and i just canceled it because i'm like yeah i'm good like you know like it's kind of too much <laughs> and then you know I mean, I haven't really done much research biblically, but I know biblically, like, Jesus was a powerful person. Like, the Holy Spirit is so powerful to change our lives. Mm -hmm. um, and I knew biblically, like, he casted out demons. And also biblically, like, 
the Holy Spirit's in me, like I have some freedom. Like I, I think um, yes. one of the things like our culture does is like diminish the Holy Spirit, like because mm -hmm. the Holy Spirit can break through anything. Like it's God, like He knows everything. Um, and I would say like, don't think of like deliverance as something where you see like, I don't know, like The Conjuring or like something like that. It's not like in the movies. It's not like the movies. It's mm -hmm. like you're literally with humans and the Holy Spirit's working that room and you're praying through stuff. Like it's not unbiblical. Like you're praying, you know, pray this off when I was a kid, pray this off when, you know, what my mom said to me to put me down, pray this time where like this person introduced me to Satan. Like yeah. it's not something where, you know, it's like man-made because um, people that like love you, they're filled with the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. um, and demons do get casted out. Um, I think a lot of people, even Christians, like when you look at Ephesians, like it's a battle of the mind, like it's not flesh and blood. Right. Um, I think one of the biggest changes was, um, you know, my mind, like if you ever like have a bunch of wires like entangled, mm -hmm. like they're all meant for like a certain purpose. But when they're all tangled up, you're blind like mm -hmm. to your sin, to what you can get. And I think that's what deliverance does. It kind of pulls this wire over here, pulls it out. So then you have all these wires that serve a purpose and you can like go fulfill who you are in so Christ. It sounds like you're describing mental and spiritual clarity. Yeah. And there was sure. sort of cloudiness or, or mm -hmm. mixed up yeah, mentally absolutely. thoughts. Okay. Yeah. So do you remember what the curses were that let these demons into your, your ancestors and had bothered you for as long as you can remember? And yeah. What the yeah. demons were? It was really just a curse of... Um, murder and um it was, that was seven generations ago wasn't yes, it yes yeah. correct and i think for me like that one was one i didn't really expect like yeah. going into a lot of people probably wouldn't think like murder in the past of generations right. um but i think that connects to like my anger growing up and like being okay. very yeah. like physical mm -hmm. like breaking stuff and there was another f there was another generational curse that yeah adultery adultery yeah so cheating on my wife is a very spiritually dangerous thing to do yes and you that was five generations wasn't it it, mm -hmm. it had gone down yeah and so some of the lust and pornography addiction was connected to these curses we found yeah and when we broke them what happened i mean i felt different i remember um i guess the biggest memory i had was like you having the bible like hit my head and like tears coming and like just smacking like, you over the head yeah no. <laughs> <laughs> but just like placing it and like feel that just like you know, drench of love, honestly. Whoa. And, um, and also, like, the adultery. You felt loved by, by whom? By Jesus, like, by God, oh, like, oh, in that moment, just, like, oh. feeling it all, like, just leave. Yeah. Um, it's hard to really explain that experience, but it, yeah. it was definitely, like, a breakthrough. Like, having tears, like, um, and stuff. So, what were the tears about? Do you remember? It was just, like, you know, like, feeling free, like, knowing that, Jesus was in my heart, like, that my new identity was in Christ, like, I'm a man of God, like, I can wake up every morning, um, and things aren't going to be, like, the most perfect they're going to be, because we live in a fallen world, but I know I can, like, walk out there and, like, share my testimony, like, yeah. not be ashamed that I got saved a month ago, even though I thought I was for so long, or, yeah. like, I can tell guys, like, you know, hey, like, you shouldn't go here, like, this will happen to me, and then, you know, X, yeah. Y, and Z, um, I've seen like God move through that. Like my fiance actually has a deliverance on Thursday this week. Oh, good. Yeah. yeah. So kind of seeing that play out has been really cool too. Yeah, I've seen that happen so many times where married couples actually come in and when they both go through it, it's so powerful for their, their yeah. relationship. Mm -hmm. So I'm, so really I'm excited, excited for you guys to have it. When are you getting married? Uh, May 20th of 2023. So right. not too long. Yeah, coming yeah. up. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, one of the reasons why Carter wanted to go through this before he got married was to start the marriage without any junk. Yeah, for a foundation. And to heal the past because you'd been in a, in, in that relationship with, mm -hmm. with Emily for a while and wanted yeah. to heal how you'd hurt her by mm -hmm. betraying her using pornography. And, and Absolutely. So uh, a, lot of, a lot of men in Carter's shoes, good-looking man that's been with uh, a number of women would be, you know, kind of proud of that. He was... In my office and he was you know to the point of tears where you just yeah I don't think it was shame but it was like regret and you wanted to be purified mm -hmm. and so um, I just saw a wonderful young man that went from addiction to purification and 
all by the power of Jesus. I mean, mm -hmm. I was there, but Christ worked through me. It yeah. wasn't me. I can't cast demons out and make Yeah, no. So you don't have um, much of that addiction or any of that addiction. What kind of freedom are you living in now? I can say, like, the biggest change, like, for me um, is that, like, whenever... Um, and, like, the thoughts are, like, really minimal to where they used to be. Like, mm -hmm. you know, I'm not waking up in the middle of the night. Um, more things you can deal with with yeah, prayer. More things. And, I think the power yeah. is, like, deliverance gives you the ability to renounce that. Like, because you've been in that process. Like, you know, like, you know, demons are cast out. You're in freedom. So, like, if there's just a thought that comes in my head. Like, for example, you know, if I'm at work and, you know, one of the bosses is like, oh, good luck getting married. Like, you know, it's gonna be hard. It's gonna be hard. hard. Like, you know, you're stupid. Like, you're, mm. you know, you're 21 years old. Like, I just like I can like go boom. Like, I renounce that thought in my head. Mm. Like, Jesus is here. I'm getting married for the right reasons, not the wrong ones. And I'm mm. gonna show you up because like, the <laughs> Holy Spirit is moving. So just stuff like that. And you know, I think I lose sleep more now. Just think about the people that you know. I want to be free, like crying yeah. for the people that like I want so bad for them. Is that too. why you're sitting here doing this video? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Like, I mean, I know one of my closest friends, like we're like brothers and, you know, he's not a Christian and he's been through a terrible upbringing and kind of had similar experiences and is like still in that sin. And, you know, I just cry out to God, I'm like, hey, like just bring him, like do what you can do, you yeah. know? So I think that's important for everyone. So I'm 25 years removed from being a junior in college. <laughs> and there yeah. are some guys that had porn addictions and sex uh -huh. addictions, but what percentage of your peers, your, especially your male peers, would you say have uh, pornography addictions or struggles? I mean, obviously, I don't know their whole life, but um, Is it pretty prevalent? from the campus environment, I'd say pretty prevalent. I mean, um, I can give you an example. My fiance was in an ethics class, and they were debating mm -hmm. pornography um, and its effects. And a lot of men were like, well, it's okay like you know you're just watching it um but pornography destroys your whole life i mean it's period like you don't understand the spiritual yeah. influence do they and there i mean there's so many we could talk for hours about how it works but i think the biggest things is it's like man-made so you're not showing what god's design is artificial yeah. intimacy it yeah, actually makes you intimacy. makes you less of a man and more aggressive mm -hmm. more angry um it imbalances like the chemicals in your brain that God has designed for you to love and nurture women. Yeah. Um, and it, you know, it supports human trafficking too, like all these things. Right. And yeah. So I think for men at my age, um, part of it is like also going against the culture. Like our culture is telling us like men aren't good. You know, like women are boss, they're queen, like they don't need us. Mm -hmm. But in reality, like they do, like, you know, we're equal partners, like we're, help me we're working together um so i say for men like biggest thing is like to step away from pornography and not do it because yeah. it'll change your life i mean it changed mine and yeah. it does the opposite effect like you think it'll make you feel better but it doesn't yeah so. it's a bad drug mm -hmm. so what is something that you would finish up with to say about uh, especially about deliverance and, and exorcism because uh, that's what we're talking yeah. about on this channel and uh, you were a Christian, and you're still struggling with uh, overwhelming, tormenting mm -hmm. uh, preoccupation with with sexual things that you didn't want. Yeah. And then you got free. So what? How did that happen? I mean, what what could you say to them that would uh, encourage? The biggest them? thing is, honestly, first I think you have to know like who Jesus is, and like, do you believe in God? Because like, if you don't, like, if you don't believe in God, then you're thinking, okay, this is, you know, this man here, like, Mark is just, like, talking to me, like, saying he's, like, that he's, dead. like, but if you have a firm, like, belief in Jesus, a firm belief in God, and you just want freedom from whatever regret, whatever sin you have, then I would totally recommend finding a place to get delivered, um, because it just changes your life, like, I mean, you know, demons are cast off you, like, you're healed, um, you pray through so many things and, and when you close your eyes like god reveals to you like so many so many things that you missed like yeah. it's incredible how much freedom i got because not only do um you know if you're in a room by yourself like you can pray to god but like when you're with people surrounded you just think about all these different things like 
that happened in your life like for me like not only pornography but like my hard relationship with my brother or mm-hmm. like being angry at my parents for like the divorce or like you know that thing my parents sent me when i was like four years old um so working through all that um i think for anyone whether you're, you're christian ministry like it'll just change your life forever and the only the only way it happens is the holy spirit yes and the Bible. all credit to so. jesus and well, thank you carter thank you If you have pornography and sexual addictions that are out of control and hurting your life and relationships, you can get freedom from your literal demons. In Jesus' name, consider exorcism and spiritual deliverance.